What does DVD stand for? A lot of people seem these days seem to think that it's a digital video disc, but this isn't quite right. DVDs are often used to store video data, and they often store it in a dense format, which explains the CND having dense at the start, but they don't have to be used to store video data. We can use them to store just pure high quality audio and lots of it. We can use them to store files from a computer of any sort. So this means that they're not just for videos, they're versatile. Hence, DVD stands for Digital Versatile Disc. Question seven. What is the sample rate of a typical music CD? We have a few options here. 8 kilohertz, 44.1 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz, and 192 kilohertz. 192 kilohertz is the sampling rate used by DVDs. If we sample an analog sound at this rate, then it means we end up having very large amounts of data very, very quickly. If we try to encode something at this level of sampling onto a CD, then the CD would find it very, very difficult to store all the information. We'd only be able to store a very, very small amount of information before we ran out of space completely. So how about something a bit smaller, like 48 kilohertz? Well, this is often used to make music recordings on computers with microphones or that sort of thing. It's often possible to find music files on computers that have a sampling rate of 48 kilohertz. CDs were not designed to run on computers though. They were designed to run on CD players. 8 kilohertz is a very small sample rate. It's good for encoding voice or things that need to be sent quickly. It's bad for encoding sound and it's not used on CDs. Our last option is B, 44.1 kilohertz. Now this is lower than 48 or 192 kilohertz, but it's high enough quality to accurately represent musical data or musical information, and it's low enough that we can store lots of it on a single CD. So B is the correct answer. Storing a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz on a CD will allow you to store about 75 minutes worth of music. If you stored the same sampling rate on a DVD or a Blu-ray disc, you'd be able to store much more because of course DVDs and Blu-ray discs can carry much more data than CDs. Question eight. The installation files of a certain computer program take up 1.8 gigabytes of data. If the program was stored on CDs, how many CDs would we need? So how much data does a CD store? That's right, about 650 megabytes. So how many megabytes do we need to store if we have 1.8 gigabytes? Well, using our conversion, we have 1,800 megabytes. So divide that by the storage capacity of a CD and we end up with 2.77. So we need 2.77 CDs to store it, except we can't put 0.77 of a CD into a computer. So we'll need to round up. If we could store data on half a CD or 0.77 of a CD, then we wouldn't need three. But because we can't, we're going to have to round that up and use three CDs. The third CD will have some empty space left over. What if instead we decided to store the program on DVDs? How many would we need to store the program? Well, what's the storage capacity of a DVD? It's much higher than a CD. That means that we won't need as many disks. A DVD can store 4.7 gigabytes of data. This is a very large amount. All of the installation files of the program are only 1.8 gigabytes. Dividing 1.8 by 4.7 gives us 0.38, which means that we only need 0.38 of a DVD to store all the data, except we can't put 0.38 of a DVD inside a computer. So we round it up. We use only one DVD for the whole program and there'll even be a lot of space on the DVD left over. Question nine. A CD contains 650 megabytes of musical data, and that's 75 minutes worth. So how much data per second is played by the CD? All right, let's have a think about this. We have 75 minutes. To turn that into a number of seconds, we need to multiply it by 60. Seconds are better than minutes because they're SI units. And then we can simply measure the data per second in megabytes per second or maybe kilobytes per second. So 75 minutes is 4,500 seconds, just multiply by 60. 650 megabytes over 4,500 seconds is 0 0.144 megabytes per second. Or if we wanted to measure it in kilobytes per second, 144 kilobytes per second. If we digitize this music with a sampling rate of 192 kilohertz, then how much data would we need to store 75 minutes of music? 
In this case, each sample takes up four bytes. That's two bytes for the left audio track and two bytes for the right audio track. We have four bytes per sample, 192 samples per second, and how many seconds? Well, 75 minutes worth, and that ends up being 4,500 seconds. So the data per second will be 192,000 times four. That is 768,000 bytes per second, or 768 kilobytes per second. So if we have this amount of data per second, and we multiply it by the number of seconds we have, we end up with a lot of kilobytes. That turns out to be, in fact, 3.46 gigabytes, a huge amount. If we wanted to store this on CDs, we'd need something like seven CDs in order to fit it all in. And this is, of course, why we use a much smaller sampling rate for CDs. It's 44.1 kilohertz instead of 192 kilohertz. Question 10. On a CD, it takes up an area of three micrometers by 0.5 micrometers to store a single one or zero. So that's one bit. Given that the program area of a CD is 86.05 cubic centimeters, so the area that it stores is this amount, and that eight bits make one byte, estimate the maximum amount of data that can be stored in a CD. So how do we go about doing this one? What we ought to do is figure out how much area it takes to store a single bit. Multiply it by eight, and that's the amount of area we need to store one byte. Then we can take the total area, divide it by the area of a byte, and figure out how many bytes will fit into that area. To store one bit takes three micrometers times 0.5 micrometers, which turns into 1.5 times 10 to the minus 12 cubic meters. The surface area of a CD is going to be 86.05 cubic centimeters, or rather square centimeters. And because they're square centimeters, we have to square this 100th of a meter. So that'll end up being 8.605 times 10 to the minus three cubic meters. So this is the area on which we can fit data, and this is the size of a bit. So the maximum amount of data that we can store is going to be 8.605 times 10 to the minus three over 1.5 times 10 to the minus 12. That gives us an answer of 5.74 billion bits. But hang on, we don't want bits because we don't work in bits when we're using computers. We work in bytes, in kilobytes and megabytes. So divide by eight to get a number of bytes, and then divide by a million to get a number of megabytes. We end up with about 717 megabytes. Now in reality, this is a little bit more than it's possible to store on a CD. Remember that when we store information on a CD, we store it in a spiral groove. There's going to be a gap between the lines in that groove. We can't just have all the lines on top of each other like this, or it will be impossible for the CD player to tell them apart. Instead, each successive part of the spiral is separated by a certain distance. And this separation is why we can't store 717 megabytes on a CD. So that's the end of the questions. In this section, we've learned about CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray discs, as well as some of the differences between how they encode and read information and how much data can be stored on each of them.